Alrighty, so a few days ago, I asked the community what video I should make next, and everybody voted for Toppings 101. So in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down everything you need to know about toppings and how to efficiently manage them in Cookie Run Kingdom. Diving right in, when it comes to toppings in Cookie Run Kingdom, there are 10 different sets to choose from. However, the four most important sets are going to be searing raspberries, solid almonds, swift chocolates, and apple jellies. And honestly, these four sets are the most important in the game. All of the other sets outside of these four are simply not worth the investment. Each one of these topping sets will provide a specific stat increase. You can see searing raspberries increases your attack percent, your solid almonds will increase your damage resistance, your swift chocolate will increase your cooldown, and then your apple jellies will increase your crit percent. It's important to pay attention to how many of a specific topping you have to equip in order for you to take advantage of the additional set bonus. You can see for Searing Raspberries, you have to equip at least three in order to get the additional 3%, and you have to equip at least five in order for you to get the additional 5%. You will notice depending on the topping set, the requirement will actually change. For a Swift Chocolate set, for instance, there is no three set bonus, there is only a five set bonus. And this set bonus is actually really important, especially as a early game player. By completing a three set of Searing Raspberries gives you that additional 3% percent to increase your overall attack especially as i mentioned as a lower level player where that three percent would make a massive difference additionally when it comes to toppings you can actually level them up in order for you to increase the stat bonus that they provide after leveling them up to level six you will actually unlock your very first sub stat same thing goes for level 9 and level 12, making it a grand total of three substats. And this honestly makes a massive difference. If you go into it utilizing a topping with zero levels versus a maxed out topping, you will see a massive difference in your overall score, your damage output, or the ability to utilize your skills via the cooldown. Additionally, on each topping, you can actually see the substats available. If you click the little circle with the eye on it, it will then pop out a window that shows you all of the bonus effects that you can receive as substats. Again, this is going to be currently at level 6, level 9, and level 12. And this chart is actually really important because it shows you the minimum and the maximum value that you can get as a substat for that specific topping. And as you probably guessed, yes, it's a 100% random as to which substat you will receive at level 6, level 9, and level 12. There is currently no way at the state of the game to select whatever substat you want. So to give you guys an example, you can see that we can roll a 1% of attack all the way through a 3% of attack. So if we go back out of here, we can see for this topping specifically, we rolled a 2.4%. So if we go back to reference it, we can see that's basically almost at the maximum amount of 3%. So not bad for the attack. Additionally, we can see that we rolled a 2% for crit. If we go back here to our chart, we can see that's literally dead smack in the middle. It could have been worse and we got a 1% or it could have been better and we've got 3%. In the last substat debuff resistance, we rolled a 1.1%. If we go back to reference the chart here one more time, we can see that we can only roll a 1% to a 2% and we rolled a 1.1, therefore on the lower end. And this is how you can tell if a topping is going to be a good topping or a trash topping and if you should further upgrade it or not. So to give you guys an example of what I mean, we went ahead and leveled up this topping to level 6. In doing so, we unlock the very first substat. In this case, it's going to be damage resistance. However, it did roll at a 1.9%. If we reference the chart, we can see that we have anywhere between 1% all the way up to a whopping 6%. Therefore, the 1.9% is really, really low. And in that case, me personally, I would not invest any more resources in upgrading this specific topping. And it's especially not worth leveling up that topping anymore because you have the ability to actually level up and get toppings like this. We got damage resist at a 5.3%. Again, that's going to be out of 6% for the total and also a 1.9% for the cooldown. And if we reference the sheet, you can see the cooldown only goes up to 2% and the damage resistance only goes up to 6%. So because we got 5.3 and 1.9, this is a way better topping. Now, additionally, when it comes to the sub stats, the three main important ones that you want to always pay attention to is going to be damage resistance, the cooldown, and then also the attack. Some honorable mentions for sub stats to focus on would be crit percent, 
an attack speed. When you're first starting off into the game, obviously you gotta just use what you have, right? You might not have the luxury or enough toppings in your inventory to really pick and choose on which ones to focus on to level up or you know what substats you're trying to go for. However, just know that the mid and the long game when it comes to toppings is to constantly farm them up and then be upgrading additional toppings, comparing those substats and utilizing and investing in the ones that have the best subs. When it comes to upgrading toppings, it is gonna cost you some gold Gold, and then also these topping pieces. Every single upgrade has the ability to obviously upgrade or actually fail. If you do happen to fail that specific upgrade, it does not give you back the resources, that being gold and topping pieces. You do inevitably spend those resources by attempting to level them up. So now the next thing I want to do is show you guys exactly how to break down the individual toppings, which ones are worth breaking down, and not only that, how you guys can net some additional topping pieces. Alrighty, so then diving into the topping section, if we look in the bottom left-hand side, we have a breakdown button. Once we go ahead and click that, it'll bring us to this menu here. This will house every single topping that we currently have in our inventory. Whether we have leveled them up or we have not leveled them up, it does not matter. It will be listed here. What we need to do is we actually need to filter out all of the Epic Plus. So if we click on the filter options, we can see here that we have regular toppings, resonant toppings, your epic all the way through common, and then everything selected. What I personally like to do is hit the hide all button, which means nothing is selected. And then what I like to do is I actually like to uncheck the epic toppings. That means that epic toppings will not show up. We do not want to break those down, at least not currently. Um, and then the second thing I'm going to do is actually probably turn off the resonant toppings. All right. Once we do that, we're going to go ahead and click show all. Now I'm going to click X and you will see that the only toppings that are currently showing are going to be rares and common toppings at the current state of the game. There are only those three options besides the resonant options. Okay. Now that we've went ahead and got all of these here, we don't need any of the rares and commons. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of them. You can see that we have a total of 2,127 of them in total. And we're going to go ahead and break them down. By breaking them down, you will see we will be able to net 3,163 topping pieces. This is an efficient way to gather some topping pieces so you can continue upgrading other toppings. Now, I highly recommend that you do not level up rares and common toppings. It's simply not worth the resource investment, that being gold and topping pieces and even stamina jellies that you use to farm them. Now, the next thing I want to talk about when it comes to breaking down toppings are going to be actually utilizing the same filter options. If we go to the filter options, we go to hide all. However, though, this time we are going to leave the epic selection checked because we are going to be breaking down some of the other epic sets that were simply not worth investing in, at least at the current state of the game. As you can see here, we have no sets selected, so no toppings are showing behind here. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select hazelnut. Once we select hazelnut, we're going to click the X button and we will see here all of the hazelnut toppings that we currently have available. Obviously, as you can see here, we don't have many of them because we do constantly break them down as they are just simply not worth investing in. We're going to go ahead and select the select all button. You can see we've got a total of 94 and we're going to go ahead and break them down. Once we go ahead and break them down, you will see, boom, they are officially gone. Now, I do want to emphasize here that I do not recommend every player get in here and start getting rid of all of their other topping sets that they're not using. One, because it doesn't count against your inventory space, so just hoarding them up and constantly holding on to them for a rainy day or for something to change in the future might benefit you. However, though, if you do find yourself in a bind and need some extra topping pieces to continue upgrading your actual good topping sets, then you can absolutely utilize this to your advantage. In addition to regular toppings, we now have resonant toppings. You can identify the resonant toppings by their unique look. Additionally, they can only be equipped on certain cookies, specifically from the City of Wizards. At the time of recording this video, that is for Moonlight Cookie, Milky Way Cookie, and Blueberry Pie. The resonant toppings function just like the normal toppings, only with the exception of the minimum percentage that you can acquire via the substats. Those numbers are going to be indicated here in the purple color instead of the standard color. To give you an example of a side-by-side -side view between a resonant topping and a normal topping, you can see that the minimum percentages on the normal toppings are a quite a bit lower compared to what they are on the resonant toppings. And that is the only difference between resonant toppings and the normal toppings. They literally function the exact same. They just have a higher minimum value. Now, the last thing I want to do before we hop out of today's video is show you guys exactly exactly how to farm toppings in the game and what specific stages that I currently recommend. 
The very first one is going to be none other than 829. On stage 829, normal mode here for the story mode, you actually have the ability to farm two of the four main important sets. You can see you can farm Searing Raspberries and you can farm Solid Almonds all in the exact same stage. As for when it comes to the Swift Chocolates, if you head over here to 825, you can see we have the ability to farm out Swift Chocolates. And last but not least here on 827, this does give you the ability to actually farm out Juicy Apple Jellies. As for 829, this is the location I personally utilize to farm my toppings for Searing Raspberries and Solid Almonds. I just find for a lot of different reasons, it is the best way to go. Some people might argue that you should be farming the higher levels in the world exploration because it returns more kingdom experience and other better resources. You do with that information as you wish. For me personally, the stage for 829 costs a lot less for stamina. It then returns, obviously, searing raspberries and solid almonds on the exact same stage. And it's very easy for me to complete whether I do it manually or I'm using time jumpers. And with that information, it's going to be wrapping up our video for today on our toppings 101 2023. If you guys have any additional questions, don't forget to drop a comment down below. Let me know what those are. Or I actually invite you guys to join the Discord. You will always find that link provided down below in the description description don't forget to like comment and subscribe here on the channel for everything cookie run kingdom related with that being said as always guys i will see you on the next one